In this video, I'm going to be going over perfect substitutes. So goods that are perfect substitutes can be substituted for one another at a constant rate. So I'll be going over the utility representation, some examples of perfect substitutes, and the indifference curves associated with these preferences. First, I'll start off with the utility representation. So the utility as a function of good one and good two is equal to a times x1 plus b times x2, where a and b are just some parameters of this utility function. And as you can see, this is actually a linear utility function. So one nice property about a linear utility function is that it has a constant marginal rate of substitution. So let's go ahead and derive that result really quickly here. So the marginal rate of substitution between goods one and two is defined as negative marginal utility of good one divided by the marginal utility with respect to good two. So this is basically the slope of an indifference curve if we put good one on the horizontal axis and good two on the vertical axis. So I'll go over that in more detail once we get, dive into the indifference curves. So just as further review, the marginal utility with respect to good one is just the partial derivative of the utility function with respect to good one. And similarly, the marginal utility with respect to good two is just the partial derivative of the utility function with respect to good two. So we can solve for these quite easily because these are just linear, right? This utility function is just linear in both goods. So therefore the numerator is just A and the denominator is just B. And since A and B are just constant parameters, we've shown that the marginal rate of substitution is just some constant negative A over B. One nice interpretation about this constant marginal rate of substitution is that good one is A over B times as valuable as good two. So that's one way you can think about interpreting these parameters A and B. And this is gonna be more clear as I go over some examples. The first example I'm going to go over is coffee and tea. So we can think about cups of coffee and cups of tea, in which case, let's go ahead and say that a consumer is indifferent between one cup of coffee and one cup of tea. They're both just as valuable to the consumer. So in that case, we can set A equal to one and B equal to one, right? So the utility function, which is a function here of coffee and tea, would just be xc for coffee and x plus xt for tea. The next example I want to go over would be between movies and television shows. So suppose a consumer has a certain amount of time that they can allocate between watching movies and watching TV shows. However, movies tend to be a little bit longer than TV shows. So suppose the consumer finds movies to be three times as valuable as TV shows because, because they can watch, let's say, three TV shows in place of one movie. So in that case, we can use the parameter A equals three and the parameter B equals one. So using these parameters, the the phrase in quotations can be read as follows. Movies are three times as valuable as TV shows. So the utility function, which will depend on hours spent watching movies and hours spent watching TV shows, is then equal to 3xm plus xt. There's one more thing I want to go over regarding the choice of these parameter values. Specifically, they're not unique. So we could have chosen A equals six and B equals two, and the ratio A over B would still be equal to three. Or we could have chosen A equals one and B equals one third, and again, the ratio would still be three. So as long as that ratio of A to B is still equal to three, then those parameter values would still yield equivalent preferences. 
Now I will go over the indifference curves associated with perfect complements. So one nice property of this particular preference is that the utility function is linear, therefore the indifference curves will also be linear. So by definition, an indifference curve is just every possible bundle that yields the same level of utility. So we can actually write any indifference curve as follows. So the utility for some set of bundles is just equal to some constant. For this example, let's just say it's equal to 10. This equation just defines an indifference curve, which shows every bundle that yields a utility equal to 10. So now let's go ahead and expand this and try to solve for something that we can graph. So we have a x1 plus b x2 is equal to 10. So if I'd like to graph this with x2 on the vertical axis and x1 on the horizontal axis, I should solve for x2 as a function of x1. So we have b times x2 is equal to 10 minus ax1, so I've just subtracted ax1 from each side. Now divide each side by b, and you'll get x2 is equal to 10 over b, that's the vertical intercept, minus a over b times x1, and the slope is clearly negative a over b because this is a linear function. So let's say this is our indifference curve, and as I mentioned, the vertical intercept is 10 over b, the slope is equal to negative a over b. And this is the indifference curve corresponding to all bundles that give you a utility equal to 10. We can also recover the horizontal intercept by just setting x2 equal to 0 and then solving for x1. So we have 0 equals 10 over b minus a over b times x1 or x1 is just equal to 10 over b times b over a. The b's cancel, and so I'm left with 10 over a. So that is our horizontal intercept. So let's draw a few more indifference curves now. So let's go ahead and draw the indifference curve where the utility is equal to 20. So let's say this is that particular indifference curve. So every bundle on this indifference curve gives you a utility equal to 20. And given the form of these intercepts from the previous example, it's clear that the vertical intercept would be 20 over B and the horizontal intercept would be 10 or sorry, 20 over A. And last, let's go ahead and draw an indifference curve where the utility is equal to 5. So let's say that's it. So this is where the utility equals 5, and the vertical intercept is therefore 5 over B, and the horizontal intercept is therefore 5 over A. So you can kind of see a pattern here as to how these indifference curves are constructed, or how you can get the intercepts, and they all have a slope equal to negative A over B.